Hey everyone, it's Michael here with GoodyReader.com and it's today I'm going to give you a comparison between the Kobo desktop software and the Kobo ebook software. Uh, a lot of confusion between what are the two programs, their use case scenarios, why you would want one over the other and so on. So first of all, the Kobo desktop app is not on the Microsoft store, only the Kobo eBooks app is. So this is the Kobo eBooks app here. This app is pretty well geared towards reading on your PC to a lesser degree, but more so uh, optimized for like mobile devices, tablets, two-in-ones, touchscreen uh, two-in-ones like the Microsoft Surface or laptops and so on. This is who's going to get the most value out of the Kobo eBooks app, whereas the Kobo desktop software is really geared towards the desktop reading on your PC so you get a lot more versatility in options, um, things that you can do with inbooks and so on. So first of all, let's look at the Kobo eBooks app. This is the main app that you could uh, scroll, you know, check out. And, and you can see it's really optimized for touchscreen, clicking on things swiping and gesturing. Uh, UI is really small. Shopping cart, sync, uh, settings brings you up like your super point accounts and so on. You click here, you can go to your home screen which is where we are now. Your library, recommended. This is a demo account so we're not going to see very many recommendations. Or the store. And clicking on the store it's a bit of a wait sometimes because just look how much data is being loaded. There's a lot, cover art, metadata, and so on. So let's click on a book, just so you can get an idea of like the, the book buying experience, because obviously if you're invested in a Kobo ecosystem, they're the global number two player behind Amazon and their Kindle readers. Uh, Kindle and Amazon has desktop software, but they don't really have like Windows 10 uh, app like Kobo does. So you can see here, star ratings, etc. There's a back button that you can click back a page. Uh, let's look at, uh, okay, let's look here at the library because this is where we are now. I'm reading, want to read, already read. Demo account, I haven't really like read too much. So again, anywhere here, you'll go to the bookstore, library recommended store, library is pretty well where you're gonna be. Let's click on a book. Okay, so you can't scroll up and down with the mouse or like swiping and gesturing to click up. Uh, there's really no indications on how you make page turns, but you know, it's just you click here at the mouse or you swipe and gesture here. There's no animated page turns, unfortunately. Uh, if you click in the center of the screen, you can bring up these options. You can jump to a particular chapter. You can click the font option and get themes, day, night, or sepia. Alignment, you can sort of go publisher's default and it kind of gives you a sense on the alignment here. So we'll make it in the middle. Page layout, auto. It makes it a two page spread, one page spread, and auto basically made it two page. Uh, you can adjust the font size if you want. Uh, font type, we're on publisher's default, but you have many other options here. And clicking here will lock the rotation if you have, if your device has like a gyroscope. If you click here, it just gives you tips and tricks, like how does this app work? Getting around, just kind of shows you where the page turn buttons are. Clicking in the center brought you to those options I showed you. Clicking at the bottom brings everything up. And it shows you clicking here will make a bookmark. And clicking here just basically brings you to the number of, you know, pages in that particular chapter. Uh, you can't uh, like long press to uh, look words up in the dictionary or make highlights. This is basically a very basic e-reading software. The Kobo desktop on the other hand, you can see here it's really optimized. My library is just full of books. Whereas, look at my library here. Only a certain number, look, look at this dead space here. You know what I mean? 
I don't know. Uh, there's too much dead space right here. Whereas with the Kobo desktop uh, app, it's making effective use of screen real estate. You can sort of make the cover art smaller or a little bit bigger. Preferences, not really a whole lot here. Uh, UI elements, well, clicking here just basically brings you to, uh, you know, to close the app. Uh, Shop Kobo, I guess, is the main screen for this. Again, it takes a while to load up because as you saw with the Kobo eBooks app, it's loading a ton of imagery, a lot of metadata, uh, all that stuff. So first time load up, when you first load this app up, it takes a while, but subsequent load ups with the same books loading, it, you know, it tends to uh, occur a little bit faster. Finally loaded and as you can see, it's pretty well a little bit of a different image as, um, you know, the Kobo eBooks app, the shopping experience, more things are just appearing here. So this is really why it takes a while to load so much stuff. And it really isn't anything to make it like load faster. So this is really what you can do here. Let's check out the book buying experience here, the same book that was on the Kobo eBooks app. Um, less, you know, less data is being loaded here, but as you can see, the text is smaller, a little bit harder to read. And I'm highlighting this and it highlights it white. Huh, that's a little bit disconcerting. Anyways, let's look at the ebook experience here. So as you can see, I'm scrolling down with the mouse and it's like scrolling with me. And there's actually page turn buttons here showing you where you would turn the pages. So you can turn pages via swipes and gestures if you have like Kobo desktop installed like on like a fully fledged like Windows 10 tablet. Scroll up and down. But unlike the Kobo eBooks app, you get a lot of options here. Highlight. Add a note. Definition. Look words up in the dictionary, or you can do like uh, Google or Wikipedia. Highlight many words if you want. And highlight that. Look up, translate. Koba's always been really good at translating, so you can see how many languages that op uh, it, it, you know, it gives you options for here. So this is what you could expect from the reading experience for Kobo for desktop. But what is this e-reader setup? Well, this is the type of desktop software that's ideal if you actually own a Kobo e-reader, say the Kobo Forma, the Libra, uh, Libra or the Kobo Clara HD. If you plug your e-reader into here, you can actually do firmware updates right on the Kobo desktop. You can send books to and from your, de you know, your Kobo device. It allows you to manage it through this app. So a lot of versatility. So suffice to say, the Kobo eBooks app for Windows 10 really only good for mobile devices. Phones we're running Windows 10, which what are those these days? There's hardly any, if not none. Uh, but for like laptops with touch screens, two in ones, and so on. If you're just using the desktop, you want to download Kobo desktop from the Kobo website and do it this way. But as you can see, the e-reading uh, aspect is far superior. Both of these are apps, so if you're at work and school, make sure that you have permission to install these sort of apps. But Kobo Desktop, effective management for e-readers, for reading, and highlights and annotations, and lots of versatility and stuff like that. Like, a ton of different stuff. It's really good. So you can see here from my uh, comparison, what these two bring to the table. Let us know what you think by dropping a comment below and forgettingreader.com. My name is Michael and everybody take care.